Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to answer the comment I got in one of my Cypress video on handling variables in Cypress. So let me read the full comment. So it says, thank you for this. It was very helpful, but I have one query. How can we retrieve value from the then or should block and assign it to any outside variable? So we can use it anywhere as you mentioned in your video while explaining should. So this was part of the Cypress commands video that I created and I will leave the link for that in the description below if you want to check it out. So this is a really good question because this is one of those things that people get confused about sometimes when using Cypress. So we will cover how to handle that in this video. Also, if you want your question to be answered as well, then leave your comment below and let me know what you need help with. And make sure to stick till the end as I will also cover some bonus content for you guys. All right, now let's take a look at the example that was referenced in that video. So I'm over here on VS Code and the example that Vipin was referencing to was actually this one. So here I'm trying to get the element which is right here and then I'm using dot should and then I'm passing in heading and then doing an expect on that heading text. So I'm just making sure that the heading text is equal to think different make different. So this is the flow that I'm trying to actually verify. So what he's mentioning is that how can I use this heading or basically this heading text and use it outside of this side dot get block. So obviously the most common way that you can think of is that hey I'll just create a variable and then I'm going to use it outside. So let's try that. So I'm going to do this. So here I will create a variable called let heading text. And then I'm going to assign this an empty value for now. And then right over here, I'm going to say heading text is equal to dollar heading dot text. So pretty straightforward. I just created a variable called heading text. And then I'm assigning the value of that heading dot text to this variable called heading text. And then I want to use it over here. So let's assume we want to try to print it over here. So I'll just do heading text. So you might want to use this heading text, for example, to do some kind of assertion, or you might want to manipulate this text to use it for your further Cypress commands. So technically over here, when I run this, I should expect it to print this entire thing, thing different, make different. So let's run this test and see what we get. So I'm going to run it by doing npx Cypress open. I'm going to click on end to end testing. Select my browser. I'm going to select my file. All right, so it's running the test. I'm going to open up console log as well. All right, so my test is finished. And if you look at the console log right here, I do not see anything printed. But on the right, if you see right here, I can see home spec.sci.js line number 28. So that means on line 28, it was trying to print something, but what we got was an empty, like nothing is actually there. So this line is entirely empty. So we just want to figure out like what happened on this line 28. So if I go back to my test, so I'm back in my test and on line 28 is where we were trying to actually print out the heading text. But instead what we got was an empty string. And the reason for that is because we initialized that empty string right here. So when it was trying to run the test, all it did was it took this value and then it printed it out. And after that, it was trying to do all of the sci.get and basically run this command. So this is the main issue when we are dealing with variables in Cypress, because what is happening over here is that at this point, when you were trying to console log, it went ahead and executed this directly, and then it's executing this. And this is because of the asynchronous behavior, the way it works in JavaScript. What happens is that it will try to print out whatever is available at that moment. So in this point, it knows that, hey, I already have access to heading text. So I'm just going to print that out right away. Then it knows that, hey, for sci.get, I'm going to have to first uh, get that element and then I need to verify certain things. So it's going to go through the steps later on. So this is happening asynchronously while this was able to get the text right away. So to handle this async behavior, what we need to do is we need to say to Cypress that, hey, execute this first. Because when you will execute this, I'm going to get the text of heading text. And then I want you to print out the heading text. So technically, if I just print out console log over here, or basically just copy this thing and put it over here, we should be able to see heading text without any issues. And this is obvious because I'm obviously trying to put the heading text here, and then I'm accessing it within the same block. So I'm going to get the text for that. But if I need to do it outside of this site.get block, so for that, we're going to do something different. So I'm going to do dot then. And within then, I'm going to create, let's say, my heading text here, which is like a parameter that I will add in. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to copy this thing, paste it here. 
and then I'm going to fix this, change it to heading text. Okay, so this is what we did. So we created a dot then block and then we passed in heading text and we're trying to basically print it out over here. But this doesn't really solve a problem because all we did is we created this parameter called heading text and I'm trying to print it out. And I can maybe change this different just to kind of say it's not the same as this. So let me change this to maybe h text, which is called heading text. So this is actually different than this. I just created this new parameter. I can name it whatever, and then I'm trying to print this out. But still at this moment, I don't know if this heading text is what this h text is. So I need to tell some way to Cypress that, hey, this heading text is what I want it to be printed out over here. So for that, within this block, I can return something. So I'm gonna say return heading text. Now it's interesting because I'm saying to my Cypress get command that which this entire command that hey do whatever you need to do but at the end finally I want you to return this heading text. Then when it's going to return this I want it to then catch it in my parameter which is h text over here and then use it to in my next line basically do whatever I want to do with that particular text. Now this is a really common thing when you're dealing with promises so if you're familiar with that this shouldn't really be too different for you. This is not really specific to Cypress. It's just the way we're telling our promise that, hey, return this, and then we catch that in our next block, or we handle that in our next block. Okay, so let's try to run this and see whether this would work or not. Just remember one thing over here, I'm doing side.get, getting the element, and then I'm using dot should, and after that, I'm trying to do my assertion. So we use should to do some kind of assertions. And now here, finally, I'm returning the heading text and then trying to do dot then on it. Now there's a reason I kind of mentioned dot should over here because we're gonna run this and we will notice something when we will run this test. So I will run this now and head over back to my Chrome. All right, I'm gonna rerun the test here. Okay, so we just finished running the test and we did get something printed over here. This is line number 29, something is printed here. But what we got is basically the selector itself. So here we got the Cypress selector returned. If you haven't seen this before, basically you get this when you're doing sci.get and you try to print it out. So we're getting a selector, which is our jQuery element over here. But this is not what we wanted, right? All we wanted was the text to get out of this selector. So how can we get the text instead? Well, let's go back and let's try to understand what is happening. Because when we did dot then over here to print this out, it's not really returning me this heading text. All it's doing is giving me the value of dot get instead. So just the way we were getting the value of heading over here, we're doing the similar thing. So you can assume this heading is basically what we're getting over here. But this is not what we want. What, what we want instead is to be able to return this particular line, line number 27 to be returned. And we want this to be able to catch it over here. So this is happening because we're using dot should. Dot should would simply give us the element that we are actually working with. We don't want the element. What we want is whatever we are returning. So I'm going to change this from dot should to dot then. And now I'm going to try to run it again and see what happens. I'm going to rerun my test here. And this time, if you notice, we got our text, which is this thing different, make different. So we're actually getting that back. And if I go to the line, which is homespec.js, and on line 29 is what we're getting, which is my thing different, make different. So that's good because now we can see that this is actually working. We're able to get the text back. So to quickly summarize, if you need to get access to your value or some kind of text outside of your Cypress command, then you need to go ahead and chain it with dot then. And within dot then, you will add in your parameter, which is what you're going to be using to print it out. Now, one thing you need to be mindful over here is you cannot do it with dot should. You need to use dot then since you're going to be returning the text. It will only work with dot then. Dot should is used simply for your assertions. So this is just one caveat you need to be aware of. So at this point, we technically do not need this let heading text over here. I can simply remove that and then just add my variable right here. So let heading text and I can just run this. This will be exact same as well. All right, so as part of the bonus content, what we're going to look at is how we can access this heading text outside of my test. For example, if I want this test, return me this heading text. How can I do that? Because right now, if I simply just print out let heading text over here. Actually, let's do this. So if I just do heading text, it will not know about what is happening over here. So we need to figure out a way where I can get this value, the heading text value to my other test as well. So for that, we're going to use a different way. We're not going to use the same way over here. 
So here I will do the similar thing. I'll do site.get. And then here I'm going to do dot invoke. And I will invoke the text. So if you're not familiar with this, all I'm doing is, hey, give me the text. I don't want to go through dot then and all of that stuff. I'm simply getting the text. And I'm using dot s and assigning the value over here to heading text. So you can think of dot s as creating a variable, but it is a Cypress specific variable. I'm saying, hey, create a variable in Cypress and call that heading text. Now I can use that over here on line 33. Instead of saying heading text, I'm going to have to do this dot heading text. So if I run right now, let's see what we get. Okay, so I just ran. So on line 26, I can get the text that I was looking for, but I actually have a test failure right here. It's saying that it cannot read the properties of undefined heading text. So this is because we're using this dot heading text on an arrow function. So if I go back, so here I'm using an arrow function. So this is where it's causing this problem. I cannot use this on an arrow function. So I'm just going to remove this and I'm going to add in a function here. And I will try to run this again. So this time not using the arrow function anymore. I'm doing a regular function and then I'm trying to print out my heading text. So I'm going to run the test again and this time we're going to see that the text will be printed out twice. And there you go. So we get this text printed out twice. One on line 26, which is right here, line 26, and the other one is line 33. So basically as part of my other test, which is on line 33 right here, we were able to get access to our text as well. So this is how you can take advantage of aliases in Cypress. Now I'm not going to go too much in detail over here. If you do want to learn more about aliases, let me know in the comments below and I can create a specific video on that. But I just wanted to give you a bonus content just in case if you're already working with variables, you should be familiar that while you can access a variable within your same test, you can also access it outside of your test block as well using the help of alias. Okay, so to summarize, we looked into two different ways of accessing variable. The first one is using dot then where you can simply pass it in your parameter and you have to return that so that you can access it using dot then. The other one is using alias where you can use it outside of your test block as well. So that's it for this video guys. Do let me know in the comments below what other Cypress content you would like me to create. If you'd like to support my work, there are a few ways to do that. The easiest is by liking and sharing this video as well as subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. That's all for now guys. I will see you all in the next one.